nothing but fluff after this. Cheetos, but... <laughs> In 2011, a study was conducted around the consumption of potato chips by Americans. The results showed that over 1.5 billion pounds of chips were consumed in the same year only. And in 2020, over 284 million Americans consumed potato chips. Snacks have never been so popular. And this is the story of one interesting snacks brand. Hey everyone and welcome to Booked, where we inspire others with inspiring stories. In today's video, we're going to go over the success story of Cheetos and talk about the man behind its creation, Richard Mantegnas. So make sure to stick with us till the end since we're going to share with you the key lessons that you should learn, as well as the books that he recommends you to read if you ever wanted to achieve the same greatness as his. With that being said, let's get into it. At least once in our lives, we had that sudden urge to get ourselves something to eat on our way to work or while hanging out with our friends or before our long-awaited soccer match started. But instead of cooking something or getting a salad from the closest restaurant, we decided to get a bag of crispy snacks in order to stimulate our taste buds or not get full, since the next meal is only a couple of hours away. Still, not all chips are worth buying, right? Some of them are tasty, others are super awesome, but there's always one bag you'd regret buying. This difference in quality allowed for certain brands to become prominent in their markets such as Lay's, Doritos, Pringles, and the all-famous Cheetos. Speaking of Cheetos, the creation of this brand is considered to be one of the most inspiring stories ever. So why don't we jump back a little bit in time and see how these flaming puff cheese snacks came into existence. Cheesy. No room for a poor Mexican. What inspires most of us as human beings are not the stories of those who were born rich and came up with a billion dollar idea, or met a friend from a similar social strata who would later on become their co-founder of a fintech company, but rather those who started from the bottom and made it to the top, and Richard Montanez is one of them. Richard Montanez was born in Mexico and grew up in Guasti, a small town near Ontario, California. Since he was a native Spanish speaker who had no knowledge about English, he found it extremely difficult to understand what his teacher was saying at school. Not only that, but Richard was born in a time when racial discrimination was still a thing in the US. He once said, I got on the bus, which was green, and I remember thinking, why can't we get on the yellow bus? All through town, people knew what that bus meant. Again, it was society placing me in a different category. What made things worse for Richard is his family's financial status. Richard was living in a one-bedroom apartment, which he had to share with his parents, his grandfather, and his 10 siblings. This pushed Richard to start working from an early age, and the jobs he and his family had taken were not the best paying ones out there either. At school, Richard wasn't the popular kid around. One time during lunch break, he brought a burrito with him. As he wanted to eat it, he noticed that the people around him were looking at him. Out of embarrassment, Richard hid his burrito. And as he got home, he asked his mom to prepare a sandwich for him next time instead of a burrito. But his mother had an even better idea. Instead of preparing a sandwich as Richard requested, she decided to make two burritos instead of one. Richard's mother told him he should have one and share the other with a friend. Surprisingly, the burritos were so good that Richard started selling them. It was at that time that Richard started to see the real value of being different. Time to switch gears. Although Richard was becoming increasingly popular at school, he was still having difficulty when it came to the English language. But instead of trying to learn the language, he decided to drop out of school. For some reason, Richard felt he didn't belong there and that he should take another path, not to mention his family was still struggling financially. So he started working in different fields, such as washing cars and picking weeds. But to Richard, it seemed as if he were going nowhere. Or at least that was the case until one day. His friend told him about a particular chips plant that was looking for a janitor. That plant belonged to the famous Frito-Lay company, and accepting this offer represented for Richard the first step towards a better future. So Richard went to his wife and asked for her help to fill out the application forms. Fortunately, Richard was hired on the spot, and from the very first day, people could see how dedicated he was at doing his job. Let's try something different. One day, Richard asked a salesman if he could join him and help him with one of his day offs. The salesman agreed to bring Richard with him, and as they got into a convenience store, Richard noticed something strange. Frito-Lay had no spicy chips, and to Richard, this was a huge miss for the company. 
but it wasn't until weeks later that Richard came up with his own billion dollar idea while having some Mexican corn. He knew that so far, no one has thought of making a spicy Cheeto. More importantly, he knew that he had to move before someone else does. What made Richard consider the idea even more was the fact that he was present in the plant when a machine broke that left a lot of undusted Cheetos. To Richard, it was now or never. Let's spice it up. Richard took some of the Cheetos home, and with the help of his wife, they managed to spice them up. And instantly, he and his family knew they had something in their hands with great potential. Richard gave it some thought and knew what he was supposed to do next. He needed to get his idea to the CEO if he ever wanted it to turn into a reality. Richard managed to get the attention of the CEO, but what surprised him even more was the fact that his idea was so interesting that it reached the plant manager. This presented Richard with his next challenge, making a presentation in order to get these spicy Cheetos to the market. To Richard, that was something completely out of his range of expertise. Weeks ago, he was mopping floors, and now he's supposed to convince some of America's big dogs to market an idea that he got from consuming some Mexican corn? No one can deny that Richard was really frustrated about the whole idea. But thanks to the support of his wife, a day at the library, and a few lines from a marketing book, he managed to nail that presentation. Months later, Frito-Lay started testing Richard's Cheetos in some small Latino markets in Los Angeles, and by 1992, Richard's spicy snacks were sold across the U.S. Cheetos is finally out there. A look from above. One of the great things about Richard Mantegna's story is the fact that the man literally started from nowhere and had neither a good education nor was he fluent in English. These are the things that almost every single American nowadays poses, yet most of them cannot even achieve half of what Richard has achieved. In 2020, Richard's net worth has been estimated to have surpassed the $14 million mark. As for Cheetos, in 2017 only, the company made more than $1.6 billion in annual sales. And in case you didn't know, that was 9% more than 2016 sales. Book Recommendations If there is one thing that we're sure about here in Booked, is that you cannot produce something unless you have the necessary knowledge about it or get inspired enough to bring it to life. Just as Steve Jobs said, you need to connect the dots. And those dots are the chunks of information that you accumulated in a particular period of time. The more dots you have, the better chances of you coming out with a revolutionary idea. And to get those dots, you need to read some books. So what follows is a couple of books that Mantegna's himself thinks you should have a look at. A Boy, A Burrito, and A Cookie by Richard Mantegna's. Sometimes fear can affect our lives in ways that we could never imagine. Although fear can sometimes be instinctive or more of a defense mechanism that is meant to protect us from bad outcomes, it can stop us from becoming the best version of ourselves. A boy, a burrito, and a cookie will show you how to eliminate this fear so that you can go full speed ahead and achieve the greatness that you've always desired. Flamin' Hot, the incredible true story of one man's rise from janitor to top executive by Richard Mantegna's. If you want to know whether and how a janitor can one day turn into an executive at one of the biggest snack companies in the US, then this is the book that holds all the answers for you. Flamin' Hot tells the story of Richard Mantegna's himself and how he managed to climb the ladder of success. This book is a must read for everyone who has big dreams and is currently struggling in his life. Lots of inspiration is delivered to you on a golden plate in this book. Richard Mantegna's proved to us that race, gender, and social status do not define your future as long as you have a dream and the needed determination to turn it into a reality that will eventually change yours, then nothing can stop you.